the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts are heading into a make or break season. If things go well because of his improvement, he'll become their long-term quarterback, but if not, this could be his last year starting anywhere. If Hurts falters, the Eagles have extra ammo to move up in next year's draft to try and grab Bryce Young or CJ Stroud, and with an improving roster headed by the addition of AJ Brown this offseason, the pressure is absolutely on for Hurts to prove himself worthy. After his rookie season, I was super low on it. He was inaccurate, horrible against pressure, didn't throw over the middle of the field, and had some issues with his footwork. But what's exciting is his clear, obvious improvement in some of those areas. The question just is, was it enough improvement? Today we'll dive into the areas where he has improved, why he was so effective in spurts last year, and where he still struggles, which could lead to the Eagles moving on. But before we do, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Aura. When Aura reached out to me and I downloaded the app, I learned that the fastest growing crime in America is identity theft. There's actually a new victim every 14 seconds. A few months ago, my uncle was online and started talking to somebody at his bank, but they didn't work at his bank. They stole a huge chunk of his money. He had no idea. It was really, really sad, and he was super embarrassed, which makes me even happier to partner with Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, which is a virtual private network, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. You might already have one or a couple of these tools, but if you don't have all of them, it's like locking the front door, but leaving the back door open. To protect your family and yourself from identity theft, go to Aura.com slash Alex Rollins, and if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial because they know that they are going to change the game. Thank you to Aura, and now let's start with where Hertz improved from his rookie year and why there's optimism about the future. Everything about him just looks better compared to year one. He's more comfortable, he's more accurate, he plays with structure more often, and his footwork looks much cleaner. He led the league in average time to throw at 2.97 seconds. A lot of that was because the Eagles' offensive line is made of sheer vibranium, and when he stayed in the pocket, his processing and accuracy were way better. The Lions kept giving him crazy pre- and post-snap looks with weird alignments and rotations, but on film, Hertz had one of his best games of the year. It's usually zone coverage when defenses don't have a defender over a receiver, and since the Lions have three safeties in to match the Eagles' three wide receivers, matching a safety on a receiver instead of a cornerback on a receiver is another zone tell, since most safeties can't guard receivers one-on-one. -on -one. But, like I said, the Lions were extremely committed to challenging Hurts with tons of strange looks, hoping to throw him off, but he kept ripping him up. They're starting with two high safeties, but Hertz recognizes that the linebackers are bowed over, which means both of them are shading towards the weak side of the formation where there are fewer receivers. They're doing this to leave an area for the strong safety to rotate down, and at the snap, Hertz confirms that he is in fact coming down in man to guard Dallas Goddard. Hertz could take the quick out to Goddard, and business would be booming, but he knows in the back of his head that since it's man, the Lions have that safety on receiver, so with Quez Watkins cutting across the field against man coverage, it's almost impossible for that safety to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. The Eagles were the second most explosive offense in the NFL, and while part of that was thanks to Hertz's improved ability to execute from within the pocket, a lot of their explosiveness came on plays when he was outside of it. He had the 37th highest pressure to sack rate, meaning when he was pressured, he was sacked just 13% of the time. Instead of taking an 8-yard loss, he could move around and hit his receivers 4, 5, 6 seconds into the down, which was also why his time to throw was the NFL's highest and why he created so many explosive gains. While this is without a doubt one of his greatest strengths, where at times he turns plays that would be sacks for 95% of quarterbacks into 15-yard gains, there are times where because he's leaving the pocket too early, he'll leave 30-yard gains on the field, or he'll just create even more pressure for himself that wouldn't have otherwise been there. The wildcard game was a brutal affair, with the Eagles losing 31-15. It 
honestly felt a million times worse than that, and every area Hurt struggles in was on full display. This sale concept the Eagles are running is gonna keep popping up today, so let's quickly lay out exactly what it is and how it works. Sale is a three-level vertical stretch concept, meaning it attacks three levels of the defense. One receiver goes vertical, one intermediate, and the other underneath. In a cover three zone structure, the defense only has two levels of defense with this deep third corner and then a curl flat defender, so this creates a vertical stretch on him where whichever route he chooses to guard, Hurts will throw away from him. But when the Bucks send a crazy exotic pressure, even though the Eagles do have it blocked up, Hurts isn't at the point in his development where he can buy time in the pocket to wait for a receiver to come open, he can only buy time out of the pocket and when he's facing a defense like the Bucks, they won't allow those easy escapes. Yes, it's challenging to maneuver a super muddy pocket to wait for Goddard to come open on the intermediate sail route, but there is a play to be made here, and Goddard does come wide open, but instead, Hertz eats a mouthful of Rydell. His greatest ability is extending plays, but it's also one of his greatest weaknesses. Offenses only get so many opportunities in a given game when they have the right call, against the right coverage, with the right look, so picking up a nice chunk on the ground actually isn't always a good thing. This segues us into our next problem, Hurts still will not throw over the middle. I've been loving these pro football focus heat maps, which I'm gonna keep using until the season starts, since they don't do them in season, where here we can see all the blue in the middle showing Hertz doesn't throw to that area. To contextualize that for the Eagles offense, he'll read just one side of the field left or right, and then won't come back over the middle or all the way back to the other side. Instead of sitting in the pocket and scanning the entire field, after two or three reads to, let's say the right, he isn't looking for inbreakers, he's taking off and running. Defenses, especially like Tampa's, vacated that middle of the field area knowing he's not gonna attack it and flooded their coverage outside to clog everything up. Here the Eagles are running sail again, and pre-snap it looks pretty good with the Bucks showing a three deep zone coverage. Hertz just has to read the curl flat defender and throw away from whoever he guards, but when the Bucks blitz a fifth defender and run more of a man-principled version of zone, Levante David takes the running back to the flat, so now this defender isn't conflicted like he'd normally be. Hertz needs to read him, but when he's gaining tons of depth and Jalen Rager is not running hard enough to affect the deep corner, this concept is basically dead. Instead of progressing back towards the middle where Watkins is breaking open into that vacated area, Hertz just jams the throw in and leaves a big play on the field. Whenever defenses were able to reduce some of the conflict that Sale creates, the Eagles didn't have an answer. Instead of sitting in the pocket, even clean pockets, Hertz's next move wasn't to survey the field, but to panic and start moving around. The Lions are already flooding the sale concept with four defenders, plus are blitzing a backside safety so this defensive end drops out. For those at home counting, that is five defenders for just three receivers, leaving one-on-one's backside. But even with all of those guys going to one side of the field, and just about the cleanest pocket you'll ever see, with all the time in the world, Hertz gets completely spooked. The last area of concern I have for him in 2022 is how much he and the receiving core struggle to connect deep. He had the league's fourth highest deep ball rate, which is categorized as throws of 20 plus yards, but ranked 29th in adjusted completion percentage, 27th in yards per attempt, and 33rd in quarterback rating. He really struggled playing from under center as well, which is probably why the Eagles barely did it, and here with the same sale concept, he misses the deep receiver coming open. He's lucky Goddard slipped, cause he was about to throw this sale route, but he doesn't really see the corner falling off, leaving the vertical receiver wide open. Still makes a pretty damn good throw on the run to Devontae Smith, but failing to correctly read these deeper concepts is why he's unsuccessful in that area. He's struggled to stay in the pocket, struggled to attack the middle of the field, and been pretty ineffective throwing the ball deep, and those three issues all come back to the core issue, his lack of pocket presence. 
When he has time in the pocket and can hang in the pocket, he's proven he can throw with consistent accuracy, can anticipate pretty well, and throw a very nice deep ball on occasion. It's obviously a really good thing he's as athletic as he is, and I think he's actually even pretty underrated in that area. But the issue with so many of these running quarterbacks is when crap hits the fan and they get that quick pressure, their answer is always to abandon the pocket instead of doing what's really challenging, buying time in that small little area with bodies flying all around. What's interesting to me doing all this research, diving into his stats and film, is that his numbers against pressure were really good, despite that not really showing up on his film. PFF gave him the fourth highest grade under pressure. He had the third most big time throws in those situations, but I think the most damning stat out of all of those is he had the second longest time to throw under pressure at nearly four seconds. That means that the area he's improved in the most, well, that improvement is due to his bad habits in extending the play, avoiding the sack, and then throwing to open receivers on broken plays, instead of staring down pressure from the pocket and ripping the defense. So while those are good skills to have, they're also holding back his development. It's exciting that the Eagles made a move to go and get AJ Brown, but turn on any film or highlight reel of his, and it's all in-breakers over the middle where Hertz refuses to target. I was pleasantly surprised to see some of the in-the-pocket development that he displayed compared to his rookie season, but I'm worried that his prospects of becoming the Eagles' long-term starter aren't a matter of how much improvement he's shown, it's more so an issue of the foundation of his game being shaky and who he is philosophically as a quarterback not translating to sustained NFL success. It's clear that the Eagles view this season as make or break for Hurts as they evaluate their own present and future. Is Jalen Hurts going to completely change his game and forget everything he's ever known? Or is he going to stick with what he does best, prove me wrong, and become the future? This